call it what you will, but on hearing Martin relate his extraordinary story, he sent out a signal far more powerful than that generated by any satellite. And what better means to demonstrate the point than by having Martin recount that story in his own words. Hi, I'm Martin Stubbs and I'm uh, a resident of Bowen Island, Canada. Bowen Island is a small island of about 3,000 people just off the coast of British Columbia. The city we directly commute to on a little ferry, 20 minute ride, is the great city of Vancouver. And it's here that I was able to discover through NASA's own video downlinked from the shuttle two types of phenomena that from my estimation should not be there. The first phenomena uh, is a spherical phenomena. It's the best I can do in terms of explaining it. And the second phenomena is a phenomena that is virtually invisible to the human eye but when filmed with the CCD camera and the broke you break the video into frames and there's 30 frames per second then you split the frames into fields because each frame contains two scan fields and it is in those fields we have discovered our second space phenomena uh, it's not a matter of finding something that is a reasonable doubt scenario. It's, it's, it's more about let's just keep collecting, studying, and analyzing, and eventually the jigsaw puzzle will come together, and it's finally happened. I held a very privileged position in the city of Vancouver. I was in charge of, for the past 20 years, actually, uh, community access cable stations and those are public stations that uh, use volunteers interns make all their own programming and put it out on the cable system here in British Columbia and throughout the rest of Canada we have 90 percent cable saturation so it's the equivalent of having a uh, full channel and in my office I had um, old log tapes from logging the station available and they were supposed to be turned over after a few times so I just piled them up and I had VCRs I had the means and I, I talked to our technical department and asked them if they could give me my own dish um, and they did and I set my machines and went about my normal daily life of managing two of these facilities and I just would go home at night after each shuttle mission or each, each day of the shuttle mission and break the tape down and I just found myself in the unique position of having the means to do it the, I was in a position to do it and I had all the motivation the second the shuttle countdown began I recorded and I stopped recording when it was at a full stop. Right. So it, it was a pretty demanding exercise. Well, you obviously the uh, SDS-61, uh, which is, was the Hubble Space Telescope mission, was 36, I seem to recall, 36 tapes with eight hours per tape. So these are, you know, you just had to keep going. Some flights are five days, some are 11 days, 14. The Hubble Space Telescope mission, I chose that mission, not because I knew about a CCD camera or anything. I chose it because the NASA had decided to make this the showcase mission. It is a very important mission. The Hubble Space Telescope is the very most delicate and important thing, and these gentlemen were going to spacewalk for seven days and fix it. So right. it was even interesting for me to just watch them work in this environment and from the very first moment the, the first download came I found our spherical phenomena. Did, did you did you set out to try and find the phenomena or did it start off as a, a sort of self-education exercise in in watching the mission footage? It, it was everything it was a self-education thing it was 
a curiosity that of why no one from 19 from the year 1991 till 1994 had bothered to look at any other footage and I was quite naive and wasn't aware it was all being downloaded because I bought into the popular culture or the urban myth that they were scrambling at it and it wasn't available since 48 I've been an editor for 25 years as well as everything else and I can I, I spent